let's do an unboxing. I am in my pajamas, but let's do an unboxing because if I don't get these seeds done tonight, well, it may be too late tomorrow. All right. My assistant Polly will be helping today. So this is the front of the packaging. So got the logo and the species, the genus and species names. When you turn them over, you'll see the seeds inside. Some are already germinating. I'll probably do a few of these also as I'm planting them so you can get a good view of the seeds and then the mix I use to grow everything out. Oh yeah, the campo is definitely germinating. So I'll show those. I'm just seeing like how many are germinating and how many aren't. All right, let's do the planting. I'm gonna plant everything in the mix that I make myself, which is equal parts sand, perlite, some vermiculite, cocoa fiber, maybe some rice hulls. But it gives you a very, very light, fast draining mix. So that's what we're going for, for all these rare species. Some like more water, less water later on in their lives, but to start them out, just to make them happy, you're gonna do a really light soil mix. Eugenia patriciae. Bocabal Dulce. Eugenia seeds run all over the spectrum in size and in shape. So what I do is I have a low space for germination, so I put as many into a container as I can possibly fit. And then once they germinate, I will repot them into another medium. So for most of these, this is what I'm going to do. I place the seeds lightly on top, unless they're germinated, and then we'll, we'll go through what we do there. And then I'm going to cover it with a very light coating. I cover these with perlite, because it gives me a much better visual representation, plus it makes the drainage underneath incredible, and I'll be able to easily get the seeds right under the surface if I ever need to check their uh, validity. Eugenia tinwipedunculata. Okay, you try saying that fast. I think I only have two seeds of this one because it was super rare and expensive. Here's what the seeds look like. Eugenia Kaipora. These are what the seeds look like. One is germinated. Actually, there are a few that may be, let me check. That one's germinated. So again, I'm gonna put them all in the same container just until they leaf out, and then I will move them to their separate containers. On here, on these, you can almost see where the other ones have sprouted on the pointy end. So I'm gonna be putting the pointy end down. Although this one's sprouting, eh, I would call that a pointy end, sure. This one also, that looks like the pointy end. And then this one as well. So we are going to have very, hopefully, successful full germination and leaf out on these. Eugenia Franca Villiana. These are what the seeds of Eugenia Franca Villiana look like. I wouldn't be too worried if you see a little bit of mold on it because it may not be mold, it may be, you know, something else. Um, like old skin or something so these look good I do not see germination on any of these yet so I'm going to place them in just a manner in which they can germinate in however they want on goes the perlite Duquedia echinophora vaca byra
Eugenia Sarasiflora. <laughs> My cat monkey really wants to get involved here. Anytime you're doing anything he thinks is interesting, he must be involved. Huh. This Eugenia is also a pretty big seeded Eugenia. I'm not sure how many seeds per fruit. It's probably multiple as many of them are, but it could just be one. I know the camera's having a hard time focusing, isn't it? The ultra rare Eugenia tinctoria. Again, I didn't get many of these seeds. Some of these are gonna be germinated. Probably gonna have a good success rate with these. I'm trying to be very careful. That's why I'm going slow. Because some of these seeds look very fragile. I couldn't tell how many were in the package. It looks like six. The one with the very long beginning will of course go in the middle, get a little bit special treatment. Then we'll do one off on the side that is pre-germinated. Make sure he's standing up pretty straight. This one is just starting to germinate, so I don't have to dig him too deep in there. Oop, I see this one peeking out. That's awesome. And then this one is yet to germinate, so he just goes in. All right, Polteria SP Pile de Paca. All right, I thought I counted three seeds, but it's just two. Rare, unknown poteria. Let's place them lightly on there. I'll just remember by the video, there's two. All right, Duquedia of Macraviana Lucinilde. Duquedia are much like a Nona, where all their seeds are gonna look similar, but different in size. Although not all Anona look exactly alike, I have actually found some round Anona some rectangular anona, but usually they have a little bit of a, you know, rounded long candy corn look. Four of those. Campomanesia adamantium. Kind of sounds like uh, something, you know, like Wolverine is made out of. Campomanesia seeds, and sorry, I'm being very careful with these because I see some are germinated, but they are usually smaller and on the more fragile side. So as you can see, this one is germinated, but the seed head has died. But a lot of the times they grow back from that. So I won't be too worried. That looks extremely healthy. It's the rest of the seeds uh, will hopefully germinate. Sometimes it's hard for me to count the seeds in the bag, so I just do a rough count. I'm gonna say that's roughly 10, but I think it was more like eight. But I didn't want to disturb the seeds until I planted them, and I already want the labels made, so we'll just go with that. And I'll leave just enough room for that one to already stick out above the perlite, and that'll be my indicator plant. All right, so let's do Duguedia off Echinophora Bruno SP Maran hao. Maran hao. Or whatever, you know. All right, you can go in there. These are going to look very similar to the ones that we have planted of other Duquedia. Mariri guinensis. I've actually, I'm actually growing a few other species of this because there's just a lot of interesting tidbits about how the fruit tastes and it's very unusual and it's usually liking acidic soil and can stand down to about 30 degrees, which is how cold we get at night. So I am actually trying some of these in Southern California to see if they can live outside. And so far the Morari ISP that I have is doing well and it survives unprotected outside. So this is a new species and I want to see how they do. All right, so once my beautiful little minions are packed up, they go into the germination station. Now the thing is, I'm running out of room. As you can see, the germination station is pretty full and I have it all over the bathroom. So these are gonna go and find a room or a place after I put everything down and away. 
But just wanted to show you, so this is some of the other Hoppa Joe stuff that I am germinating and I'm getting really good success rates. The first ones I've transplanted are this Campomanesia uh, SP Serrata Roxa. I was able to get three of those to live. The fourth one is dying, but three healthy ones. That's a Eugenia uh, Teratifolia, Ternantifolia, hard to say. But I, that only one seed was available and it was expensive, but yay, good germination on that. And then as you can see, Morari Pusa, another species of that. Eugenia acutata, Eugenia dysenterica, Franco Villiana again, uh, but I think that's another cultivar, some other Eugenia, all really good success rate so far. And then I'm all he sold me some Plinia, some Monona, some Campo from elsewhere, and I'm getting good germinations with that. In fact, I have germinations from him everywhere. So everyone that I'm buying seeds from is pretty darn good so far, but I stick to like my basic two or three. Um, hard to trust some of the other people getting into it, but once I do and I get good germination from them, they'll be on my list for life.